Root by Roger Hargreaves. Mr. Root is rude. He is very rude. He is very, very rude. He is worse than very, very rude. He's extraordinarily rude. When you meet somebody, you might think to yourself that that person has a large nose. But you wouldn't say anything to them, would you? Because that would be rude, wouldn't it? Well, Mr. Rude would just blurt it out. Big nose! But he wouldn't stop there. Oh no, not Mr. Rude. Big nose! With a nose like that, you could vacuum the floor! Can you imagine saying that to somebody? Well, I hope you can't. And he was the same with everybody. If he met someone overweight, he would say, shout, That's it! You're supposed to take the food that's out the fridge, not eat the fridge as well. When he was driving along in his car, he would yell rude things at people he passed by. Mr. Rude is a horrible man who didn't have a nice thing to say to anyone and, not surprisingly, no one liked him. One day, Mr. Root met Little Miss Tiny, or not so much met as nearly trod on her. Good morning, said Little Miss Tiny. Look at the size of you, explained Mr. Root. Squid, you're so dummy, I could squeeze you under my phone. Poor little Miss Tiny burst into tears and ran home. Behind a tree on the other side of the lane, Mr. Happy looked anything but happy. He had heard everything. The next morning, Mr. Happy was outside Mr. Root's house, suitcase in hand. Mr. Happy knocked on Mr. Root's front door. Go away! shouted Mr. Root. Mr. Happy knocked again. Mr. Root opened the door. Can't you read? said Mr. Root, pointing at his doormat. Mr. Root's doormat did not say welcome like everybody else's doormat. Mr. Root had crossed out welcome and then, in large black letters, had written, Go away! underneath. Mr. Happy smiled past Mr. Rude and went into the living room. Get up! shouted Mr. Rude. Mr. Happy smiled an even larger smile and sat down in the armchair. Mr. Rude exploded. He ranted and raged for half an hour, but Mr. Happy calmly sat through it all, smiling. Eventually, Mr. Rude went into the kitchen to make himself supper without offering any to Mr. Happy. After his supper, Mr. Rude ranted and raced for a full hour. But whatever Mr. Rude called him, Mr. Happy took no notice. Batter! Yellow thing! Finally, Mr. Rude turned off the lights and went upstairs without offering Mr. Happy a bed for the night. When he came down in the morning, Mr. Happy was still there, still smiling. Okay, I give in, cried Mr. Rude. What do you want? Breakfast will be nice, said Mr. Happy. Please, Mr. Rude made breakfast for him. It was the first time in Mr. Rude's life that he'd had ever done anything for someone else. In fact, it was the first time he'd had ever asked anybody what they wanted. Thank you, said Mr. Happy, when he'd finished. 
Right, you can go now. Dick cried at Mr. Rood. But Mr. Abby did not budge. Mr. Rood ranted and raged and ranted and raged. But he ended up making lunch for Mr. Abby and supper. And he even offered Mr. Happy a bed for the night. Mr. Happy stayed for a fortnight. Slowly, the ranting and raging became less and less. Mr. Rude discovered he had something that he had never he persisted. Madness. When it was time for Mr. Happy to leave, he shook Mr. Rude's hand and said, Thank you so much, Mr. Rude. I really enjoyed my stay. Mr. Rude beamed a smile that was even a bit as wide as Mr. Happy's and found himself saying, And so did I. Mr. Rude was a changed man. Burp, burps Mr. Rude. Well, almost.